Hello and welcome to Tip and Trick AIS 001 titled Using Level of Detail. The purpose of this tip and trick is to enhance your skills and share with you solutions to problems that other users experience. Our tips and tricks are created from the top support calls logged with our support desk. If you require more information on our support desk, then please contact our customer services on 01784 419933. Or you can email them on customer.services at midastechnology.co.uk. All of our tips and tricks can be found on our website www.midastechnology.co.uk. Please remember that we are also issuing tips and tricks on all of the Autodesk products as well as the one that you are currently watching. Today what we want to have a look at is using what we call level of detail. We get a lot of customers that ask us about trying to manage very large assemblies and using things like level of detail gives you the ability to be able to do this quite effectively. You'll see that the current assembly that I have open here and, uh, uh, has a certain amount of information currently installed and if you can have a look at my capacity meter on the bottom right hand side you'll see there that I currently have 241 occurrences of this assembly of which 104 of them are currently documents loaded into RAM. What we want to do is try and maximize the amount of RAM that we have available and by using things like level of detail we can do that. All assemblies with inside of Inventor have the capability to create what we call level of detail. Standard level of details include the ability to be able to just turn components on and off. But what we can also do is we can actually fact suppress information or even create what we call derived assemblies. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up this uh, control panel box that I've got here just in its own window and let's have a look at this in a little bit more detail. Being an assembly, as I mentioned to you before, we have a standard level of details within the main assembly as, as, as it is here. Um, over and above that, what we can do here is we can create what we call a substitute level of detail and we can either derive it or select a single part file. I'm going to derive it in my example here and using Autodesk derived technology, what we can do here is we can derive whatever assembly components that we want into a single standard part file and thus substitute that in and out of our assembly and thus maximize the amount of RAM that's not being used. And by using the derived technology, what I can do here is specify, as I said to you before, that I'd like these particular components included in my substitute. Just I'm going to simplify them too using the derived technology. And I can then say, OK, so Inventor goes away, builds a single component, and gives me what we call a substitute level of detail, which represents that whole assembly that I had previously. I can then just save it and say that I'd like to be able to use it. Now, using the level of detail, this is great because I can now toggle between whether I'd like it in more detail or obviously not. And if I had to go back to my main assembly here, if I go close this now, you can see here that apart from having the main level of details at the top of my assembly tree, what I can do is I can go and bury down into every single assembly that I've got here and have a look at each of its representations that are being shown here. So within this particular assembly, I've got obviously my sub-assembly of this panel control box. And if I want to, what I can do now is I can say that I'd like this particular panel control box to and have a look at basically just that single substitute level of detail. You can, of course, do all of this directly inside of any particular sub-assembly and specify any particular type of level of, re of representation that you would need within each single uh, uh, assembly. Now you'll have a look here where I started off with some 104 documents open in RAM. You can see by just doing that simple change that I've done here and been able to minimize that, you'll see that this, that this uh, assembly now is only 49 components loaded inside of RAM instead of the 104. So I've practically been able to halve it. This is obviously very powerful and of course can save me a lot of uh, uh, system resources. Don't forget that the level of detail itself um, can be saved. So you might want to save a level of detail okay, for uh, the way the assembly is currently being represented. So if I want to here, I could say that I'd like to uh, save this as, as maybe a simple representation. And at any particular stage now, if I wanted to, I can say that I'd have, like to have a look at this either in a master uh, type of environment or alternatively a simple. Okay, so I can basically toggle, toggle backwards and forwards. If I say that I'd like to go back to the master, I get everything loaded in RAM at any particular stage. If I want to go back to simple, I can easily go back and do that as well. And this, of course, makes life, like I say, a lot easier. 
By doing that, you not only be able to work with the different components inside of your assembly, but you also have the ability that when you open up this actual assembly, any particular type of assembly, remember you've got these options here. And under the options, you can specify which level of detail or which representation you would like. And if you've saved it there, you can open it directly and thus, of course, maximize what you're doing. I hope you found this uh, uh, tip and trick useful. Thanks very much.